you guys are huge retro junkies. Um, I'm not calling you a junkie retro, don't you worry. Um, let's get into this. So, so guys, for, unless you've been living under a rock, Duke Nukem uh, 2011 was a game that should have released in 2001. Am I right, Wilhelm? But it absolutely. Got, it got through. It got put through all sorts of of very questionable decisions by the the guy who blocked William. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And it's quite a good story um, on on Twitter. But but it, Duke Nukem Forever was still a, a game ahead of its time in many ways when it released in 2011. There was so much you could do in that game. Mm. Uh, nah, I, I I really wouldn't say necessarily that. Okay, maybe not ahead oh. of its time, but it was still it was still relatively ambitious. But man, what I saw of this two thousand and one model prototype is nuts. Anyway, take it away, Will. You you spit you spit your thing. Oh, dude, that's it's a big thing. That's a big fucking thing. Um, well, uh, to to give people a bit of insight, I don't want to go too much into into detail about the backstory but a little bit so that people you know um who don't know um get get a little bit of context if, if you want to know more about that story in detail i recommend you checking out uh matt mcmuscle's video about the, the development cycle and civ 11's video on duke nukem forever um duke nukem forever is probably one of the most infamous games out there with a very troubled developmental cycle a um and with a very underwhelming um result you know it's a it's a game that underperformed disappointed a lot of fans and definitely been through a very rough time um basically to um sum that whole story up um, duke nukem forever was developed uh, as far back as in uh, 797 it was supposed to be a, a, another uh, 2D 2D shoot 'em up, you know, like Metal Slug, because the Duke Nukem games actually started out as 2D shoot 'em up games. But after seeing how uh, well Duke Nukem 3D actually did, you know, Duke Nukem 3D became a, a massive. In 1999, hit. right? Or 99? No, no, no. Uh, 96. 96. Release 96. Um, that game became a big commercial and. Uh, critical hit it's basically the game that made duke the icon he was and in my heart still is so the team wanted to make uh wanted to uh, to make duke nukem forever uh, another 3d fps game but they george broussard specifically wanted to, uh, duke nukem forever to be the biggest most bombastic uh, ambitious title out there. He wanted that game to blow um, everything out of the water. So development started around 97 and they licensed the It Tech 2 engine, the engine that powered Quake 2. And but then af but then um, this is where trouble is began. This is where trouble kind of started because that was in the time where then. Um, a lot of engine, uh, some engine uh, swaps happened because shortly after the Etec 2 engine uh, came out, the Unreal engine came out, and that was the hot engine. You you remember that cover with uh, that had uh, a model of uh, from from a character from from an enemy of from the game Unreal, and where it has like the headline, a, a screenshot from an actual PC game, you know. Like um, th that 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 shows how much how big of a deal that engine was. So George Broussard, who wanted Duke Nukem Forever just to be you know the biggest, most expensive game out there, uh, he swapped from It Tech Two to the Unreal Engine, and development from there um, went fine until Dune Three dropped. And when George Broussard saw um, the horror elements and the lighting engine, he started hyperventilating and wanted horror elements and that uh, advanced lighting in Duke Nukem Forever. Then Half-Life 2 came out and 
George Broussard saw the seesaw puzzles and started coming all over the office and also wanted to have physics puzzles for the Duke. <laughs> Basically, to, um, what really hurt that development was that it was oh, too ambitious. George Broussard really wanted Duke to be Duke Nukem Forever to really have it all. He wanted that game to have everything the other major titles have just for it to really you know, be the game. The problem was that the staff was not up for that task. They really didn't have, have a lot of people this to really... This incredible. This, I know. Uh, look at it. I know. Flipping heck. And the way the glass fell and shattered and fell, like, this doesn't have everything. Like, for its time, it looks in insane for a 2001 I, game. I mean, the trouble was that um, they didn't really have enough people at 3D Realms in order to really implement everything in time. So, you know, development was moving around slowly. They were burning money until there was just no money left. So, 3D Realms closed in 2009, approached Gearbox um, for help because Randy Pitchford was is the head of uh, Gearbox and... He worked for, for 3D Realms, even was a level designer for the fourth episode of Duke Nukem 3D. So he, of course, had a, a soft spot for both the company and the Duke Nukem IP, which is why he then um, took the task, approached Gearbox with a pitch, and promised that pitch to even be released um, around 2011. And that was then um, the Duke Nukem Forever we then ended up getting and even the 2011 version is a very interesting um kind of kind of you know you can see you can really see the kind of trouble the kind of um the kind of uh trouble that occurred during development like when you play that game it's like it's like watching a movie that had a hundred different directors working on it because for one, you have um, the Duke Nukem, the Unreal Engine Duke Nukem Forever with what it was going with at the Duke Casino and stuff like that. But then you were at like some, at like the alien underground thing where it starts to become a bit more like Dune 3. And then you had like those physics puzzles uh, torn, uh, thrown around there as well. Like you see, it's a very, it, it became a bit of a mess. It was a bit of a messy thing what resulted out of that mm -hmm. and and people were just you know looking at the game and thought to themselves oh man like uh that 2001 version of the game looks amazing i, I wish we would have gotten that version and um so, um so the people understand why specifically that unreal engine build of the game why that uh 2001 version it's because um there was a trailer for um the it Tech 2 uh, Duke Nukem Forever, but the thing is with that, it didn't really got far into development because at the time where they were uh, licensing that engine, the It Tech 2 engine wasn't re wasn't even out. So the E3 trailer that was shown for that It Tech 2 um, version of Duke Nukem Forever was basically all pre-rendered stuff. You know, none of it was like actual gameplay. And... The 2001 version was the one that was the farthest into development from all the other builds out there. And it's one that looked the most awesome. You know, before the game itself got leaked, um, there was there was an E3 trailer and th some gameplay footage. A not was leaked not to the extent of like you know the 2001 build but still there was there were a, a few snippets of that of of gameplay be, uh, being leaked to you know being leaked on the internet and people thought themselves man this looks so much better mm -hmm. um and now what ended up happening was that that 2001 build actually got leaked i think back in may 9th and you know that's 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 like a nice thing because 
that that just I, I remember like literally a, a few days ago I was on Doomsayer's show and I was just like I I just I just said to him dude I just want a new Duke Nukem game I just want some new Duke content and then mere days later the 2001 build got leaked on the same day as my father's birthday and I, that was the moment I realized I'm powerful I can have everything <laughs> that I want in the world, and nothing's out it. of my reach. The thing is, is I'm looking at 2011 Duke Nukem gameplay now, and it's it's completely different to the. I know. It's like it's a it's a completely different experience. I mean, the original was giving me almost Deus Ex vibes. There was a lot of um, experimentation, kind of almost like um, sim. What do you what do you call them? Kind of games where they. Immersive well, sim. Immersive meaning. sim. Yeah, immersive sim yeah. elements. Um, uh, going for it. Um, so, so now the build got leaked, and everybody who played that build, who looked at that build, just looked at it and was like, "Yeah, that would have fucking rocked." Yeah. Why didn't Why didn't they like? Um, to 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 um uh. To clarify, um, that build isn't finished. Like the, yeah. the most, there there was a very Mods, popular Mods rumor. Will probably finish. Yeah, it yeah. Like uh, like there was a popular rumor that the uh, uh, that the two thousand one build was actually actually ninety percent done, and I I don't know if that rumor is either false or if I don't like after like that 2001 build dropped there are people saying that it's actually a 2002 build that's actually 90% done but that one's still inside the uh, shit stained grease soaked hands of Randy Pitchford so mm -hmm. yeah but even though it's a very unfinished build you know this is this is a this is a, also the, the part where George Broussard was only mildly right right about it it's not the that that build isn't that finished but he's still wrong about uh, calling it just a smattering of test levels because you can't tell me that this is just a compilation of tests those weren't tests the levels are way too detailed and way too layered for those just to be tests they have just too much character and just uh, too much hard put into them just to be clarified a smattering of tests and like for it, to, for it to be that that stuff to be have been made 10 years prior to the actual game come releasing it, it just shows that something obviously went drastically in a different direction um yeah and all that shit was scrapped and it's a big shame i mean i'm not gonna lie looking at 2011 duke nukem it looks a hell load of fun like you can pick up shit from a toilet and throw it at walls and you can stick rats in microwaves. I mean, that's, that's, that stuff sounds really messed up. But I mean, the the fact that you can do that that stuff in this game is just ridiculous. But I think... I mean, it's not a bad game, but compared to Duke Nukem 3D... Version. <laughs> I mean... I mean, uh, I mean, like, uh, yeah, uh, uh, you mean, like, sorry, the game sorry, yeah, 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 sorry, uh, I was just, I mean, the 2011 version is not a bad game, it's just incredibly mediocre, especially when you compare it to Duke Nukem 3D and the 2001 build of that game. Mm -hmm. And, um, god, what, 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 what did I want to say again? Um, uh, uh, looking, okay, looking, looking at that build because. I, I've downloaded that build, and um, like as soon as I uh, learned that uh, it's already available to download, I downloaded it immediately and looked at it. And after looking at it, I just have to say, how in the world could John Broussard, George Broussard, think that this wasn't good enough? How in the world could he think that? Because despite the, because despite the fact that. It, those those levels are clearly unfinished, you know. Like a lot of these levels are playable, but um, some of them are empty, and uh, some of them don't actually progress further because the level hasn't been developed that far to have you know an exit. Still, like what what is on display? You know, the content that is on display, the things that um, are finished that are put together, look amazing. 
Mm-hmm. Like holy hell! Yeah, like a motorcycle. Levels. There's a level where you're on a motorcycle. Yeah. And yeah, like leaving Las Vegas and to chase like. Bro, yeah, it was, it was incredible. Like some of the shit I was, I was like that, like that entire first episode, like the entire opening of that game, even though it's unfinished, is still hell of a lot better than the entire opening of 2011 Duke Nukem Forever's opening. Like th- that, like, um, I, I love that start. Like, how could you go from a from that start of the 2001 build? Like, it starts you're in the studio, um you know uh go to the talk show you know duke tells how great he is like oh, i kicked those alien bastards real good and all that and then he goes off to his penthouse his penthouse caught on fire he puts out that fire um runs to the rooftops to the other side of his penthouse gets uh his golden eagle from one of his maidens goes on another rooftop crawls through ventilation he reached the top of the building, fights the infected EDF soldiers, explosions happening everywhere, and these then... These weapons look dope, bro. <laughs> yeah. Look at absolutely. Like, like, that glorious 2001 gunplay is amazing. All, all these yeah. weapons, man. You've got, like... Oh, man, it's... It's insane. The the different... This guy, this guy called... Um, I'll subscribe to him, Protox. Shout out to him. Only has a, a thousand subscribers, um, but like he's released a fantastic demo uh, where he's testing everything in the game. I was watching it earlier on, and um, like th- there's a there's a bit where he's in Las Vegas, and yeah, that level looks amazing. It, it's so beautiful to look at, man. Like uh, for, for for its time, I can't believe like, this, n- this like, shit didn't get uh, get released. Like, I- I didn't, I don't really get it. Like, he could, George Broussard could have released that build of the game, and it would have been one of the most impressive game of its time. Like, some of the, the things shown, like, the game at times looks even more impressive to me than 2011 Duke Nukem Forever. Like, holy hell, like, those levels are just, just, like, just, um, shining with personality, charm, and... You know just you know what this reminds me of? Is it reminds yeah. me of um, the unreleased Star Wars Battlefront Three compared to the remake Star Wars Battlefront that Dice did. You guys remember that? Yeah, yeah, I do. I do. Where, like, in the original Star Wars Battlefront Three that was gonna come out, that we saw a gameplay demo for, you could mm-hmm. fight on land, you could get into a spaceship, and you could go and fight in space battles in outer space. And then you could dock your spaceship into an enemy capital ship, get out of that, out of your ship, fight inside the enemy capital ship, blow up the enemy capital ship, jump back in your spaceship, <laughs> fly yeah. down to Naboo, fly down to Naboo with the, like, you know, something that you got from the enemy spaceship and use it to kind of, like, continue the fight on the ground. All this stuff was done in the demo that you could see in the demo for the original Star Wars Battlefront 3 that we never Insane. Like, like looking at these levels, like I, I, I just don't get it. Like, like Duke's Casino, the Las Vegas level, and the Forbidden City. Like, those, those are levels that just look insanely amazing. Like, they, they just so atmospheric. They have so much character and personality. Slick Willie as well. Um, like th- th- those, those are the levels. Like again, it's an unfinished like those are unfinished levels sure but they just they there aren't they, those aren't test levels those aren't no, just a smattering no of way. tests like those were visions he, just he, way he called them that and uh yeah I, he I called it the other that. day on twitter it's, yeah yeah like that's that's it's straight up shame. yes like it's a huge those shame. aren't those aren't tests those were visions right in the process of being realized until that fat bastard just decided oh we need seesaw puzzles. Like mm-hmm. I, I don't want to put too much, too much crap on George Broussard, but it just pisses me off that he, he call, he just he says, you know, game like this. yeah, butch, well, yeah, not, don't, not only butcher this game, but he like goes about on about saying uh, he, he doesn't like to think about Duke Duke and Ferry because well, it reminds him of that painful past, but that painful past is entirely on him. He's the reason why development was as 
brutal as it was. Like again, see Matt McMuscle's video on Preach. it. Like, <laughs> it, like he he should have he should have been kicked out of the project. He really wasn't. He really just wasn't up for that task. He he really was just crunching his his people to death for at the for at the end of the day and mediocre title to trying be to live up to other games yeah games ambitions instead of letting duke nuke can be its own thing like he was crunching his people just at the end of the day for gearbox to hastily put together a, a mountain mediocre mm. yeah yeah uh, who, who wanted D- david did you wanted to ask something oh i was just gonna ask what was the so this is the 2001 build yeah yeah I assume back then to get it up to what would have been they what they needed was probably another twelve months. So we're looking at twenty twenty two twenty three release window. I was just looking through the first person shooter games that got released there. I can't see where they would have had a direct competition to make him want to change direction. Like what was he so terrified of it being put up against? Because all there is is Medal of Honor. I mean, it's George Prasad, man. I I really don't hmm. like. Like, um, it's, like the, the it's, development it's itself, sorry. like the like development itself is like a lengthy uh, process. Like, it's the game is mm. clearly in a, a quite an unfinished state, and 3D Realms didn't had the biggest staff at the time. So, um, yeah. also George Prasarn was like pissing around in the background, like literally denying money uh, from Take Two mm. for some but reason. Like, but that's what I mean. There's, there's no. Competi- competition from a, you know, th- let's say is that this thing was polished and finished and they released it in mid 2003. Other than Medal of Honor, I just cannot find another game there that would be for a commercial release window reason to not have pursued this. So it's got to be from a creative point. Yeah. I mean, maybe. When did, yeah. um, I mean, when did the Grand Theft Auto games come out? Uh, 2003, right? Two thousand two two thousand for three and four and San Andreas. Sometime GTA three released. Uh I think it was two thousand three, yeah. Let me double check. GTA three. There's like I remember that GTA yeah, three Yeah, it was two thousand and one. Blew- October two thousand and one. Yeah, like GTA three blew people away of what was possible on mm. um uh, um but you know, I, I think that he's probably right. It was probably George Hard, but but you know at that time games were getting that point where they're like oh my god we had no idea that we could do this before and now we know that we can and that's kind of what gta did at the time like like like, know, like here the here the gameplay being shown by from slick willy like this is like another instance where it's like damn like it just it just showed me like what what could have been like the potentials yeah. just pouring all over like that 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 section uh sleek willy i remember uh there's like that section where duke gets into a van and the edf infected edf soldiers um you know block that uh van off um shoot that van blow that van up and then you basically had to uh find a secret exit from that van you know there's like at the bottom like some kind of a door that you opened and you crawl at the bottom of from the van from the van into the uh S- slick willy whorehouse where you then start to uh shooting those very same infected edf soldiers that trapped you there it was just amazing uh duke nukem badassery that they just throughout for some reason like i really just cannot get why they why george Broussard acted the way he did like that build is just really really fucking amazing like the who weapons are the, fun who owns uh, the duke nukem license um gearbox did own own cip now because um mm-hmm. you know like if, um, and that's three D realms, group then, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like this is like this is the thing. This is the thing that I wanted to get on because now I just wanted to get go on the main thing. Why that leak was is so big and is okay. actually it means means so much to me and why it's actually quite a bigger thing than some people would like to believe. Aside from it actually being just you know, just showing how amazing that. How amazing Duke Nukem Forever could have actually been. It also sparks a bit of light 
into the future of Duke because for one, um, that build leaked alongside the source code of Duke Nukem Forever and the Duke Nukem modding community is a very passionate and committed group of people. Like They even recreated um, Duke Nukem Forever that... Uh, from from the E three trailers, you know, of that two thousand and one build mm -hmm. into Duke Nukem three D, basically trying to uh make that Duke Nukem forever everybody wanted uh in Duke Nukem three D and it's an amazing mod and just m mere days later, you know, just, just a day later after uh that after Duke Nukem Forever has been uh made available to download there are already mods out there like one mod um like there, there aren't a lot but there's already a mod out where uh the music where some of the music of the levels is restored wow and and with and with the source code being leaked it just to me is a matter of time till someone or till a group of people have that build finished up where they where they just fully You'll realized and yeah where, the where they thing. <laughs> yeah where they just finish up and give us the game duke nukem forever should have always been it deserved to be yeah it deserved to be i mean um the, you'll have devs I, you'll have devs who worked on that game who will see the finished product thanks to the modding community which is so uh, we, they are the unsung heroes of the gaming industry, without a doubt. So, some Absolutely. studios owe, owe their studios to these guys, right? CDP Project Red, for example. Um, and yet, you know, you'll get devs who worked on this game who will see the finished product when the when the fully modded, um, kind of restored, lost version is released in in all its glory. I'll probably cry. They'll probably cry because they'll see their vision realized, you know, as well, true as it could be. And uh, and it could uh, be devs who worked on the game that actually finished the game now. That would be amazing. Yeah, could be. Uh, I just hope that Randy Pitchford doesn't claim that, or you know, to take slings down. Because if he does, I'll. Oh no! I, I, I'm, not, I'm, not allowed, I'm, I'm not. I'm not allowed. I'm not. I'm not allowed to say that in public. But yeah. you can. You can think yourselves to rest. Um, like th this is like. Upset. Yeah, yeah. To to put it to put it loosely. Yeah. Uh, this is like one. This is like the thing that really, you know, like I've said, sparks light for me, where where I just get hope because the the modern community is very passionate and. I I don't know if um, the design document though is made been made available. There are rumors that the design document for that game has been leaked as well, but um, it has yet to been confirmed, I believe. But mm -hmm. I, I I think I think you know the community will be able to polish that thing up, finish that thing up, and just give us the Duke Nukem forever that always should have been. Another Amen, thing, bro. another thing that Amen. another thing that really uh, gives me hope about that is um, when Duke nu when Duke Nukem Forever that 2001 build leaked, it made a lot of headlines. I saw that like there there was an account um, with just 100 followers, I believe, that uh, tweeted out that the the build in fact got leaked, and that tweet got 10,000 li 10, likes right away. Every wow. single, every single uh, major uh, gaming news outlet talked about that leak. You know, IGN was talking about it. All, all the people were talking about it, and you know that just goes to show, and that just demonstrates that Duke still is inside the minds of the people. That Duke still is as relevant as he was back in the day and that there still is a lot of difference a lot a lot of interest and a lot of well people waiting and hoping for a new duke nukem game and you know with Facts. embrace and with embracer group um you know now owning gearbox they seem they might see that that you know that 2001 built making headlines at 
people to talk about it and that people still um want want to see duke backed they may see they may see that and well maybe consider um taking duke nukem out of the dark into the light again and give us a new game yeah if, if like that's fair, with with embracer group having the that uh, current mm. structure they've got, and, and then owning the IP, and I, I think this is a fair comment to put forward. If you got a new Duke Nukem game that was top shelf, double A standard, Embracer Group can produce that level of game yeah. quite cheaply and quite quickly if they wanted to. I mean, if you, if they if they built it in Unreal Engine four or five, whatever they wanted to do, built it in Unity if they wanted to, and put it in an engine that's easy to use got the concepts down duke is duke nukem you don't have to rewrite that character or anything you just got to put him in a setting put a game together off we go it doesn't yeah. have to be photorealism triple a top shelf i mean yeah that's not what the people want they want like give us a double a you know solid top shelf double a standard we'll take a few little quirks mm -hmm. and bugs and whatever but just give us the games i mean we're so dis desperate that we are all spend our time inside an unfinished build. I mean, mm, exactly, I, I exactly. really we, we take what we can what we can get. Also, another thing that I wanted to mention is I really love that mechanic uh, that in that two thousand and one build. You know, it, it has it has a much better use of the ego system. The ego system in that game is basically health, and I I love that system because um. Um, every time you kill enemies, do get some ego back. You know, you get per kill eight ego points back. It really and is fueled by I, ego. <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah. And it not only fits the character, but it also encourages the player to play a little uh, to play aggressively. Not only encourages the player to play aggressively, but also rewards the player for aggressive play. You know, it just not not like. The thing that then later came uh, with the 2011 Duke Nukem, where it just turned into a health region cover shooter, like no, like I, I, when when I played that, you know, when I got to that rooftop rooftop segment where you have to fight uh, those infected EDF soldiers, and you saw that per kill I got some health back, I was just like, this is amazing, like this is amazing, it's fucking rocked, but. Hmm. And, and George threw that away because he fucking saw seesaw puzzles. <laughs> like, well, like, I love it, man. I love you. Like, I love your passion. Like, like, what what did I say? I summon. I summon the most gifted, the most passionate, the most qualified, and the most magnificent coders, developers out there to finish that build up you know unreal engine you're up to the task does DZ know does DZ work with unreal engine uh DZ, yeah DZ is currently using the um oh what's it called the um uh oh my days it's really common engine uh you, unity is unity it? yeah he's he using the unity unity engine i think if i remember correctly Easy. If you learn Unreal and finish Duke Nukem forever, I will literally pay you. I'll pay you. Listen to me. I summon you all, not for just some useless crap those other people in suits are trying to sell you on. No, I'm selling you on hope, I'm selling you on dreams, and I'm selling you on magic. Help me finish duke nukem forever the duke nukem forever that the people need and that the people deserve make the dream reality give, duke give that his vision testicles. life give duke his testicles bowls of steel ball people Balls. give us <laughs> our duke back <laughs> and i will literally thank you all because i don't have the money to pay you all but you'll make the dream come true and you'll give the vision of all those passionate people who worked decades on that dream. game, on that build. You give that vision life, you give that vision a heart and you give that vision a face and you'll make that vision live. Preaching so will. 
I'm oh. summoning you all. Do your work. I'll see you there. I'll tell you what. Round